Hello and welcome again to the not so weekly, weekly news from RC Model Reviews. And today I've got a t-shirt, it was given to me by some people at the Multi-Rotor people. Look at this, I'll put that's it. Um, Multi-Rotor Fly in Kumiu, New Zealand, 2014. And they gave me a poster too, so here we go. Free plug, Multi-Rotor Fly in. If you've got HD, you can pause this and read that. And they even gave me, what else have we got here? It's another poster, not quite as flash as the first one. And uh, there's instructions. I think if you ask them, go to the website, you get instructions where to go and all the pilot briefing and everything. So there you go, there's a whole lot of information. If you're into multi-rotors and you live in New Zealand, then by all means, go and have a look. And uh, I'm sure you'll learn a lot. Perhaps take your own multi-rotor, have some fun yourself. There you go. Now, what's coming up? Well, I've um, got a few new things to look at, so there'll be a few new videos. The diversity controller video is almost done. What a lot of work that was, never mind. That's all part of the puzzle. Um, I've got, I'm going to be doing a focus pretty soon on learning to fly because although probably most of you know how to fly, sooner or later you're going to have to teach others to fly, hopefully, because you're going to pay back to the hobby. You've got a responsibility to teach other people to fly if they want to learn. So I'm looking at some stuff like this. This is the SN sort of buddy box thing where you can put two receivers in one model and Two transmitters, student pilot, no leads, no wires between the transmitters or anything. And the benefit of this is that it overcomes one of the, the problems that if someone rolls up at your field and they're running a JR or a Spectrum system and you're flying Futaba or something else, the channel ordering is wrong. So it's not so easy just to buddy box between the two because all sorts of problems occur. With this, you can run a Spectrum receiver and a Futaba receiver and each transmitter will work perfectly right and they just switch between them as required. So I'm going to look closely at that. Sounds like a brilliant idea. It's quite bulky and nah, there are a few downsides, but we'll look at it and see how much that offers the student pilot or the instructor. Also this, which will be coming up very shortly, this is the Turnigy T, uh, what is it? Um, T1000 FC plus GPS. It's a on in-flight stabilization system, which makes it easier for beginners because they don't have to worry about losing control, over controlling it will automatically stabilize the model. So they just let go of the sticks and it comes back to straight and level. And because it has this GPS receiver, it'll even bring the plane home. If you get too far away while you're learning to fly, brilliant. So I'll be looking at this as well. And what else? Also, buddy box lead. Every Why does my phone always go when I'm on the doing videos. Anyway, um, buddy box lead. It's an essential part of teaching someone to fly unless you're using something like the SN system. So, you know, where do you get them? Which ones do you use? How do they work? Well, look at that too. And that's probably pretty much about it. I'd better check my message on my phone. I'm oh, sorry, that was someone coming out to, uh, to see me for some help with their radio gear. That's what I do. Um, yeah, so that's what's coming up. Also, one of the big questions I'm asked all the time is, What's the right size motor? What's the right size ESC? What's the right size prop for my plane? So I've started working on a video that hopefully will enable you to choose all those things. Now a lot of RTFs and ARFs come with motors and all recommendations already, but sometimes, sometimes you just wanna know, I want a scratch build for instance, what do I put in it? Or you've got a model that used to be nitro, what do I put in it? Or you've just decided you wanna hot a model up, how far can I go? I'll cover those topics in some come, the videos coming up fairly shortly. Also, I've just done a video explaining to you all about what sense and avoid is, because what is sense and avoid? I've spoken about it, I'm working on it. People have seen that I'm working on it. A lot of people have asked, well, what is it? how does it work? What's it gonna do? Why would I need it? So I'm gonna tell you all about that too. And that's coming up very shortly. Already done that one? I'll be editing it up very soon. So yep, other thing is people have noticed this on the bench. Look at that. That's the new Hi-Tech Aurora 9X. Now, you know that I had reviewed, well, I'll put it away, the Hi-Tech Aurora 9. This is the 9X. This has got some big improvements over the original 9. It's got much lower latency. Now, Hi-Tech said in the past, well, latency is not important, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, now they're saying it's really low latency, so they've changed the tuner, but uh, manufacturers do this. They're always going to play to the strengths of their product. And as we know, the, the latency of the old 9X was a bit high compared to other radios, and Hi-Tech played it down and said, look, we've got people flying 3D and helicopters, they don't seem to mind. Uh, now they're saying this is just the bee's knees because it's seven milliseconds. And yeah, to be honest, for most people, latency isn't an issue. But this claims seven milliseconds, and I've had a look, and it's pretty damn close. But there are some downsides to these low latency radios. What are they? I'll tell you. Now, 
I have this radio because I've just finished a review on it for Airborne magazine. It's an Australian modeling magazine. They sent me this to review. I've written a review. So I'm not going to review this per se again because I've already done the review. If you want to see it, you can buy Airborne magazine or you can go to the website. I'm sure they'll have something up there uh, once they publish it and you can have a look at that. So, But what I'm going to do is I might have a bit of a comparison between 9X and 9. Aurora 9X, Aurora 9. Just see what's happened. See how far they've come in a few short years with this particular product. It's interesting, even from my own perspective, when I picked this up, I thought, oh, hey, that really feels quite nice. I didn't like the ergonomics of the Aurora 9, but for some reason, this feels better. It's no different. The sticks are in the same place. Everything's pretty much the same, but it just feels better. I don't know why. What have they done? How have they been so clever to do that? Guess we'll find out when I have a look at it. So there you go. Um, stay tuned for that. It's coming up. Also, this will give me a chance, an opportunity to review this. This is the Delta receiver, Delta 8 receiver. Now you might have seen these things. FreeSky are selling or manufacturing these and they're sold on a number of websites. And they're a really cool receiver. They will do FreeSky's own ACS, what is it, ACCST, spread spectrum frequency hopping system. So it'll work with the FreeSky modules or FreeSky Tyrannus. It'll also work, however, with the Futaba FHSS system. And it'll work with um, the high tech. AFSA, AFHS, oh, these numbers. It'll work with high tech Futaba or FreeSky. Now, what a brilliant thing that is. It means one receiver working with three sets of gear because to date, we've really been stuffed by the 2.4 manufacturers. It's been commit to our brand, you know, and that's it. Once you buy a JR transmitter or a Spectrum transmitter, or once you buy a Futaba transmitter, you can only buy their receivers or clones of them. If you want to change, oh, no, I've got to replace all those receivers. With this thing, you could switch between high tech Futaba and FreeSky. And keep your receivers if you use these. Brilliant, wonderful. In fact, even as a FreeSky receiver, it's a nice little form factor. It's quite small. It's got a tapered thing. It's got two antennas, in pin, Ooh, and on its own rights, it's a brilliant little receiver. So we'll look very closely at this. We'll do some range test comparisons between this and the high-tech options because high-tech have got a number of new receivers with the Aurora 9X called the Maxima. Maxima receivers, I think they are. They're quite small, and they have the you know light antennas, none of this boater crap on the end. So. We'll do some comparisons with that. So yeah, I've really got my work cut out for me over the next few weeks on the bench. And that's what I'll be doing, getting stuck in and doing it. But I will also be working very hard on the, on the sense and avoid system because I've got to do that to hopefully make a bit of money. Do you see how much work I end up doing supporting people around the country and around the world who are in the hobby and, you know, I'm where they come. So that's what I do. So thank you. I'm sorry for the interruptions. Stay tuned. Any questions on the bottom, if you like it, thumbs up. See you soon again on RC Model Reviews. Now it's back to the bench.